Hello, welcome to our online learning and I welcome new viewers to my channel. This is lesson 5 on probability and in today's lesson I'll be talking to you about how that probability tree diagram questions and also how to solve probability questions without using diagrams. Let's look at example 1. Please pause the video and take time to read the question make sure you understand the context. Example 1. Bona has 10 pencils in a pencil case. 3 of the pencils are blue, 7 of the pencils are red. Bona takes out a pencil at random and note the color. He then takes out the second pencil at random and writes down its color. We are supposed to represent the information probability tree diagram and also work out the probability for at most one red pencil being taken and also exactly one blue pencil being taken okay now we need to understand that there are two events the first picking and the second picking so let's look at what happens during the first picking so during the first one to pick a blue you know is three out of ten and also to pick a red will be 7 out of 10. That one is very easy for us to understand. Now, when it comes to probability tree diagram without replacement, you need to be very careful during the second picking. Now, during the second picking, if you are on blue, it means you already picked a blue. Let me just repeat the animation for you to see. We had three before. So now on the second pick, assuming we picked the first one was a blue, that means you won't have any three blues, but you have only two blues. So the probability of picking the next blue will be two out of a total of nine. As you can see, there are two out of nine. Two blue out of nine. But the red will still be the same number, but the total will still be out of nine. So getting a red will be 7 out of 9. Now once you finish one side, you need to revert to the original position. So you revert back, revert and we start again. On this line, we are saying we picked a red, so we need to take one of the red off. And therefore, we won't have 7 red, we will have 6. So getting a red will be 6 out of 9. And we will still have 3 blue as it was originally. And the blue will be three out of nine so this is the only difference between probability tree diagram with replacement and without replacement so when it's without replacement you need to be careful with your second section of the diagram now let's label our work so we have blue 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 red red blue and red red at most one pencil is taken at most that means the maximum number of pen one red pencil should be one we don't want more than one so it should be one red pencil or no red at all so as you can see that will be these three options and the easy way is to work out two reds and take it away from one so to get a red two reds will be seven for ten times six over nine and if you take that from one that will give us 48 over 90. Now for the second part, exactly one blue pencil. Exactly one blue pencil. So the two options. So that's 3, 10 times 7 over 9. Then we have 7, 10 times 3 over 9. And that gives us 42 over 90. So that's the first example with our placement. Second example, so Cecilia puts these cards in a bag. The bags have markings or uh, letters A or O written on them. And she picks two cards at random. And we need to represent this on a diagram. So it's the same. Picking two at random is the same as picking one, not replacing it, and pick another one. So you need to be mindful of that. To pick two is the same as pick the first one. You don't replace the first picking, then you pick another one. So we start. 
first pick it could either be a letter A or a letter O. So to get a letter A, that's three out of seven. Letter O, four out of seven. Now if we're picking, if we are on the first branch, that means we've picked A, therefore one of the A's should be taken away. So there will be only two A's left. So two over six. And we still have O, four over six. Revert to the original position. Now we are on letter O. So if we pick letter O, then one of the O's must also be taken away. So we now have 3 over 6 for the O's, and the A's will be 3 over 6. So it work out probability that exactly one letter A card is picked, one letter A card exactly. So that is AO and OA. So you need to work that out separately. 3 over 7 times 4 over 6 plus 4 over 7 times 3 over 6. And that gives you 24 over 42. Sometimes you may be asked to simplify the probability, but I just leave it as it is like that. Now the next example is not necessarily probability tree diagram without replacement, but it's just a thinking skills involving probability tree diagram. So let's look. Andrew supports two teams in a football competition. The probability that team A reaches the final is 0.25. The probability that both teams reach the final is 0.1. Represent this on a probability tree diagram and calculate the probability that one team reaches the final. Okay, now if you look at it carefully, we know the probability of team A reaches final is 0.25. We know both team A and B reach final is 0.1. But we're not giving probability for team B. So we need to learn how to work backwards. So team A, we know to reach final is 0.25. But team B, we don't know anything about that. That's a question mark. But we know that both reaching final, A and B, is 0.1. And 0.1 comes from team A and team B, both reaching final. So we need to set up a simple equation. So that means that 0.25 times whatever we don't know should equal to 0.1. So if we divide both sides by 0.25, we now know 0.4 as the probability of team B reaching final. Then we can now continue our tree diagram. So we know each branch should add up to 1, so the complement is 0.75. With this 0.4, that will be 0 0.6, and the same repeats on the second one. So if you want to work out the probability that one thing which is final is Fe that's finals or eliminated or eliminated or final, these two is what we need to calculate. So 0 0.25 times 0 0.6 plus 0 0.75 times 0 0.4, and that gives us 0.45. Now that brings us to probability tree diagram questions. Now the next stage is where we talk about probability whereby using diagram will be much complicated. So therefore we've got to use our thinking skills to create the pattern of working out the probability without using diagram. So the next two examples will be without using diagrams. Now here are nine tiles. We have one three and four written on them. So four cards have one, two cards, three, and three cards, four. So Gabriella takes at random a tile. She does not replace the tile. She then takes a at random a second tile. We need to calculate probability that the tile that she takes have even numbers on them. They both have even numbers. The second one is the first tile has a greater number than the second tile. Okay, let's go step by step. For the first one, if we want to, if we want to create a diagram, it's going to be more complicated because we start with three options, then the next three, and it's going to be more complicated. So we need to think of options, okay? For possibility of having even numbers, 
both cards are even numbers, then the whole mass have what? Four. That's the first thing. That's the only possibility. Because only four holes and even number there. So it means we are probably getting a four and four the second time. So getting a four for the first time is three over nine. But if you've already gotten four for the first one, therefore there won't be any three left. There will be only two of the fours left. So that will be two out of eight. And that will give us six over 72. Now for B, we are supposed to talk about probability that Gabriela takes a greater uh, number for the first tile compared to the second one. So what are the options? We have 4, 1, 4, 3, and 3, 1. These are the possibilities. 4 in the first second is 1. 4 in the first uh, second is 3. 4 in the first second is 1. These are the three options. So you need to work each out separately and add your answers. So getting a 4 will be 3 out of 9. Now getting a 1 is still 4, but it will not be 9 anymore because we've already taken 1 off as the 4. So that will be 4 over 8. So that gives us 4, 1, the answer. Let's look for 4, 3. Getting a 4 for the first time is 3 over 9. Now getting a 3 is two options, but not out of 9, but it's an out of 8 because first 4 is taken off. So as you can see, there's a pattern. The denominator, there's always a pattern. Now the third one, 3, 1. Getting a 3 is 2 out of 9. And getting a 1 is 4, but out of 8. So we add these three options. And that will give us 26 over 72. Now last example. We have Barbara has different flavors of scripts in her cupboard. She has 10 ready salted crisps, 7 cheese and onion, and 3 salt and vinegar. Barbara is going to take 2 crisps at random. Work out probability that 2 crisps will never be the same flavor. Okay. Also, if you're going to have different flavor, then the easiest way is to work out they all have the same flavor and take the, our answer away from 1. So we're going to begin by working out as if we're looking for the same flavor. Same flavor will be ready salted and ready salted, cheese and onion, cheese and onion, salt and vinegar, and salt and vinegar. So we have 20 in all. So not same flavor is 1 minus probability of same flavor, like I said before. So these are the options. Ready salted and ready salted, cheese and onion, cheese and onion, salt and vinegar, salt and vinegar. So first, ready salted. Is 10 out of 20, but the second ready sorted will be 9 out of 19. Cheese and onion will be 7 for the first one out of 20, but the second cheese and onion will be 6 out of 19. Like I said, there's always a pattern for the denominator, so you need to be mindful of that. And salt and vinegar, the first one is 3 out of 10, the second one will be 2 out of 19. That gives you 138 over 380. That one is for same flavor. So not the same flavor will be 1 minus 138 over 380. And that will give us 242 over 380. Sometimes you may be asked to simplify, but I always leave it as the original probability. So thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new to this channel. And see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye.